Good morning, Quiet Copter 101. And before we get started, here's my shout outs. Today's shout out goes to Nadun Dilshu and Reynaldo Cal. Nadun Dilshu and Reynaldo Cal were the first to say first in one of my recent videos. And that's both win a shout out. So congratulations to both of you guys. What I got for you today? This is the SG700 ZL drone. What is the SG700 ZL drone? Well, looking at it, you can say right away, yeah, it is another folding drone. But this one is different than most. Now, I want you to be very careful, folks. Uh, if this drone does interest you later on, uh, this is the optical flow drone. I want to make it very clear. This is the optical flow position hold drone. There are three other, or there's a total of four versions of this being sold, cheaper versions of this. This is the only one with optical flow sensors. So, you know, if you do, this does interest you after today's flight, make sure when you go to purchase it, purchase the one with optical flow position hold because the other three cheaper ones do not have position hold, just making it clear. Okay, yeah, that's what makes it special, folks. This one does have position hold. Remember when I said this is going to be the year of position hold drones? Well, <laughs> they're coming out right and left now. There's the position hold sensor on this one. But if you look at it, it is different than most other position holds. Most other ones, you see a very tiny pinhole camera. This one has a very good 720p HD sensor for the camera look, that looks downward to maintain its position above the ground. Um, when I say that, this one does not require any inputs to maintain its position. It has both altitude hold and an optical sensor that looks at the ground, so you really don't need to even fly it. Just Once you get into the air, it will just hover and maintain its position very similar to a GPS drone. The only thing different is that as this does not have a GPS, it can't remember the position from where it took off from to return home. So uh, it doesn't have that feature, but it does have position, positioning, automatic positioning uh, included with that sensor. Now, again, I mentioned the 720p sensor is, you know, it's HD video. Uh, if you place it right above your head, you can get underneath and actually take photos and videos of yourself looking down or what most people will use is this forward-looking camera. It also has a, seven, a very nice 720p HD camera that looks forward. It can be tilted up or down manually before takeoff. Um, other than that, uh, it comes with a 900 milliamp per hour uh, battery. It is proprietary. It is charged via the micro USB port right there, so you don't need a special charger for it, but uh, you will need to buy uh, SG700 batteries to uh, you know, if you want to keep on flying. Now, remember I said there's three other versions of this. They all use that same battery, so you should be able to find replacement batteries uh, probably through the three other versions. By the way, those three other versions is there's a 0.3 megapixel camera version uh, with Wi-Fi. There's a 2 megapixel camera version with Wi-Fi. Again, both of those do not have optical flow. And there's also a 2 megapixel HD camera uh, that does not have Wi-Fi capability, FPV capability. Instead, it records directly to a micro SD card slot. This one, its micro SD card slot is empty, this optical flow one. So don't go putting a micro SD card in there or else you will lose it. It will get, lot, just, it will get uh, uh, stuck in there and you're going to have to open up the quadcopter to get, out, get it out. So again, this does not have uh, SD card recording capability, unfortunately. That is the drone. Let's go over the controller. Looking at the controller, it's another Wingsland R6 clone controller. I just uh, flew another drone recently that had this same, exact same controller. So I guess there's a company out there producing these controllers for these drones uh, and sending them to different companies. But again, you open it by bringing both of these uh, handles down and out, and then you can place your phone inside here, and this is the phone holder in effect. Uh, let me turn it back off again to save the battery. Buttons on this, you can change the rates or the speeds of the quadcopter by pressing this button here. It does have one key return. This, again, this is not return to home. This merely flies the opposite direction. The quadcopter was pointed when it took off by pressing that button there. You can activate headless mode by pressing this button here. And you can do a flip by pressing this button here and telling it which direction to flip. Automatic takeoff is activated by pressing this button here. Or you can start the motors and do a manual takeoff by first pulling by, down both sticks and then giving throttle to take off. And you can do an emergency stop if it crashes by pressing this button here to quickly stop the motors. Start video by holding down this button here. Or in stop video by pressing this button here again. And take a photo by pressing this button here. Okay, let's uh, fire this up and I'll give you an example of how this thing flies and how its camera looks. So I hope you enjoy this flight.
Okay, the first thing we're going to do is, before I put my phone in there, we're going to make sure there's no flyaway potential. So we're going to start the motors and give it, make it a manual takeoff. And let's see how that position hold works first off. It's actually doing a very good job maintaining its position all by itself. There is a wind blowing from that direction. Okay, now I'm going to turn off the transmitter and see what happens. 1001, 1002, 1003, 1000, and it descends to landing. Can I stop it? No. <laughs> okay. So, we don't have flyaway potential. Okay, I, I am going to insert my uh, phone into the controller and we're going to go into a follow-on flight. So, hang on, folks. Okay, this is the HFUN uh, app for flying this particular quadcopter. Before we go into uh, flying it though, let's hit, go into the settings. That's that gear icon in the upper left. And notice the, the different settings here. The ver very first, most important one is that one on the very far right that says English. Make sure you're set to English because again, this can be in Chinese. Uh, but other settings that we got on here, let's go back to English. <laughs> I apparently switched it. But if we notice, we can set the left hand or right hand mode for the throttle. We are in left hand mode. That's in case we're using the app to fly this. And the control mode is classic. You can also use uh, body feeling and rocker. I like, actually I like rocker. I'm going to use that one. That's your manual, normal sticks. And uh, there's also firmware upgrades. We're not going to go into that for this particular quadcopter. But we're going to take off, in, instead of in flight mode, in master modes where this is only being used as a FPV monitor for this first flight. And all we need to do is hit start. We don't need to calibrate the gyros because I did that at home. And we should have FPV video view, and we do. Now, on the left side there, notice that camera over there. That camera on the left, if we press it, that switches back and forth between the belly camera and the forward camera. So we're going to start off with the forward camera, and we're going to start off uh, recording video. And I am going to do an automatic takeoff this time by simply pressing the automatic takeoff button right there. And we're going to do automatic landing. <laughs> it did not like the automatic takeoff. I'm not sure what's going on there. Maybe it's because we're using this app. But let's go over there again. And instead of an automatic takeoff this time, Oh, I forgot to mention, this thing does automatic video, or pictures. But, and let's do manual takeoff. Let's land it. Okay, we're going to hit stop, folks. Obviously, I think this thing does need to be calibrated. So we're going to go back over there and actually do a calibration of the drone. I guess I was wrong. Okay, this time we're going to hit that calibrate button. And let's see if I calibrate it. Calibrate is finished, so hopefully that won't do that again. And let's hit start again. And I'm going to start the motors. Down and out. Then give it throttle. And landing it again, because it is drifting. Again, to start, we are going to be in master mode. We're just using the phone as an FPV monitor, but we hit start there, and we should have FPV view, and we do. And then I'm going to bring uh, both sticks down and out to start the motors, and press up to, to take off. And I'm not seeing any position hold here. Apparently, when you're flying it with the app, position hold does not work or with the controller and the app. Let me try it with the app alone and see if that helps it. But we're going to try to fly it using the phone only. So hitting start. And uh, let's start the video too. And hitting automatic takeoff. And we'll hold its position this time. And lo and behold, it's kind of holding its position. <laughs> and it's climbing upward. But let's see if I can get it in the video. Okay, it likes working with the app, so we'll stick with that, folks. Coming down a little lower, since I want to use this as a selfie drone, pulling the rocker stick down. Now this thing will automatically take photos if you give it a V sign, supposedly. 
Okay, going up a little higher. It's and the timer starts once you give the V sign. I'm trying to get it to go at a steady altitude. Okay, V. V. <laughs> so interesting. It's taking a lot of V's, a lot of pictures. But again, it didn't seem to like the controller, but it doesn't mind this. Uh, it's taking a lot of those V's. Where's it seeing all those V's? <laughs> I don't know. There it goes again. So keep in mind, it's just going to be taking lots of shots. What it's doing, folks, is if it sees any angular like a V, it will automatically take a photo, you know, after three seconds, and it's doing such. It also seems to be slowly rotating. Um, let's go up a bit higher. This little selfie bird. Again, it's intended for you to go out and uh, quickly open it up, connect it to your phone. Don't use that controller. For some reason, that, I guess you could fly it with a controller just to, you know, for acrobatics and aerobatics, but if you're going to be using it as a follow me quadcopter or a, uh, not a follow me, but a selfie quadcopter, it would be best to just to uh, use your phone and simplest to use your phone to get it into the air and take videos. Okay, uh, other things this can do. Let's go up higher. And we are going to switch cameras. Let me hit stop there. And let me switch to the bottom camera, the belly camera. This is what it's looking at. Let me go up a little, little bit higher. Get into the video. <laughs> and there I am up there. Take a photo. See if I can take a photo. Uh, don't come down on me. <laughs> There's a wind blowing. <laughs> and I can tell you right now, it's a sensor. Take a photo if you can. How about if I go like this? No, it's not doing it. So I'm going to manually take a photo. From up there. That's its belly camera. Hey, let's bring it back down again. Pulling down on the stick. Coming down, coming down. So it's belly camera. Eh. If you're into uh, overhead shots, I guess it's okay. Going back to the forward camera, there I am again. But again, there's a breeze going by, and this is kind of bouncy when you got a breeze. It's holding its position in that breeze. But, um, <laughs> but it's not holding its altitude very well with the breeze. Let's go back. I'll go back a little forward back. Let's start the video camera one more time. We're going to do this for a little bit, and then I'm going to switch back to the controller just to look at its uh, controllability, or its, you know, can it be a fun learn to fly sport quadcopter? It's taking video very well. It looks good. I'm not seeing a lot of lag. Take a photo. <laughs> do it again. Take another photo. <laughs> it's trying to stay the same altitude as the drone. Going up a little higher. Going up a little higher. A little higher. V. V. I'm assuming it's working. Maybe not. One more. So, you know, that's an interesting feature to add. So, you know, a inexpensive selfie quadcopter. Turn it around this way. Whoops, whoops, whoops. What did I do? Emergency stop. I think I am in the wrong mode. This is not mode two. Or at least the yaw. The left stick was showing uh, roll. That was not yaw. <laughs> so interesting that it did that. But I'm going to lower the camera now and stop that video. Okay, I'm going to have the camera pointed downward now. Let's see if we can get it to take off again. Automatic landing, take off. Okay, going up higher. I lowered the camera so that the altitude will, will have less effect on me. But uh, make, let me make sure Mobazin's recording. Here goes another picture. Okay, Mobazin is recording. Coming back out of that. And it's, it's seeing 
a v-shape somewhere oh my shadow and me <laughs> so that's that's why it's taking these pictures non-stop see my shadow on the ground and me it's assuming that's a v-shape and it's going to the ground I don't know if it's getting low on power I think it's low on power it might be might not have much more video or much more uh, battery power okay I tried it with the controller there's no more power that's its flight time folks uh, interesting quadcopter um, I don't know why it has issues there it would drift and when I tried to use the controller with using this as a monitor I'm not sure why that was happening but uh, once I switched to using the phone alone to uh, control it I, I didn't have in those types of uh, drifting issues so it worked much better using the phone and again you know most people if you want to use this as a selfie quadcopter you would use the phone it makes it simpler to get it up in the air and take your photos and videos and get back on the ground again instead of carrying around that controller with it so that's the ZD ZL drone hope you enjoyed this flight this is quadcopter 101 signing out